and they're off in the TVG.com Haskell. Taba is sent hard for some early speed. Jack Christopher and Benevengo. Jack Christopher and Benevengo now go on with it. And then it's Taba in third. One time Willard is headstrong in the early going. And Howling Time is on the outside, four wide into the first turn and about three lengths off the lead. Then comes Cyberknife on the inside of White Abario and King of Hollywood is at the back of the field. Long shot Benevengo will go to the six furlong pole as the leader by a light. Jack Christopher will track him in second, Taba close up third. Howling Time inching up on the outside takes the third spot as they get to the back stretch. Then it's one time Willard. Two lengths clear of White Abario past the 5 8 pole. Cyberknife inside of him and King of Hollywood. They're covered by eight lengths. Benevengo is the leader by three quarters of a length. Jack Christopher is a comfortable second, and Howling Time is clearly third. Taba has lost a little bit of ground being pushed along, and Cyberknife coming through inside of him as they head to the 3 8 pole. And now Jack Christopher is up to take the lead. Jack Christopher puts his head in front. A big run from Howling Time with a three-wide bid at the quarter pole. At the rail, Benevengo just behind them, Cyberknife, and then Taba, they turn for home. It's Jack Christopher in front, Howling Time. Taba switches to the outside, and he's now putting in a strong bid. And here comes Taba. Taba in the center of the track with good-looking stride, squares off with Cyberknife. Cyberknife takes the lead. Taba going with him. These two in a thriller. Cyberknife just in front, and Cyberknife has won the TVG.com Haskell over Taba. Jack Christopher finished third, and Howling Time was fourth. The running time, one minute, 46.24 seconds. What a race in the end, and in fact, we see another track record at the mile and eight distance. Just hours removed from that established track record, 146 to 24 one hundredths, as it's Cyberknife knifing through the inside to pull off this victory for Al Gold and his Gold Square LLC. Florent Giroux and Brad Cox go back to back in the Haskell Stakes. But we go into the first turn. Keep an eye on Cyberknife, absolutely. But going into the first turn, Mike Smith and Taba are content taking off the pace. Does this cost them in the end, given what he's able to do? And Jack Christopher, he seemed to have a perfect spot after everything happened going into the first As Ortiz told me earlier today, he didn't know who he was going to sit off of, but plan A was this going to be to sit off somebody. It happens to be the long shot, the eight, Benavango, who showed more speed and more aggressiveness than anybody going into the first turn. Jose Ortiz was content to go ahead and take back. He'll sit off the hip of him. Now focus on the horse down in third in the red cap. That is a Taba. He said that Mike said in the Kentucky Derby, as soon as that horse immediately took dirt, that was his day on the first Saturday in May. He Finds himself down on the inside, covered up in four, speaking to Taba. The trip for Jack Christopher in second. Incredibly identical to all four races coming in here today. If you go back and watch the film, he sat in second, tracking in second, just off the hip of the leader, going down the backstretch. Further than that, Scotty, third last in the black silks on the rail is where we find our eventual winner in Cyber Night. Yeah, we're watching all of this develop in the front end. We're not even, if I, at least I'm not looking to the back half of the field. That's where Cyber Night comes from. At this point in time, Jack Christopher's in a perfect spot. Tabe is off the bridle. Mike Smith's trying to get him into the race. Here comes Cyberknife to the inside of Taba. Once Taba gets out into the clear, this horse runs a giant race. He's still off the bridle, somehow loops this field and gets himself involved. How he does this, Flo's deciding to go around a horse uh -huh. at this point in time. Then he's going to find that gap to work with down to the inside of Jack Christopher. Look how patient Flo is at this point in time. Taba with a gallant effort that is a giant run for a horse given the position that he had and where he was at down the backstretch but then saving the ground that ends up being the difference here with Cyberknife to pick off this victory what a renewal of the TVG.com Haskell State. You can see Flo's thought process just a little bit at the top of the stretch. It looked like he wanted to split Jack Christopher and Howling Time. He was waiting, 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 not checking, more so just idling just a little bit. The only option at that particular moment was to go down to the rail and go to the inside of Jack Christopher. Back to the second place finisher in Taba. I thought he was off the bridle. I thought he was going to finish off the board midway on the far turn. And he comes back and he runs a bang-up race to finish second. Keep in mind, this is only his 
fourth career start. He's still young. He's still inexperienced. This is Cyber Knight's ninth career start today. But what happens, and I know we can sit back and say what happens if this, what happens if that. What happens if Taba doesn't get locked in and into that spot that he finds himself going into Maybe the first he finds year. himself traveling a little bit more comfortable down the backstretch, say if he was sitting off the hip of Jack Christopher in third three wide. We'll never know. Bottom line is, it's a race, it's tactics, it's about trip, it's about decisions that are being made. And Cyberknife and Florent Giroux made all the right moves. Thanks again to our presenting sponsor of the grade one, TBG.com, Haskell Stakes, Lanes and Farm, a great